Ronsley, do you know where I'm calling you from? I'm in Port Pirie in South Australia. We've been travelling. We're travelling to the Northern Territory today and we've been travelling. We've been um, from Sydney to Mildura last night. We've been on the road since 4 a.m. So, yes, I'm in the car. My children are all here. It's full on. This is dedication. Wow. wow. <laughs> this is how much I want to figure out Clubhouse. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I was, I, I, I'm doing this all on my own because I haven't done one of these launches. I don't know how, I don't know. I can't remember the last time I did. I can't. So I had to find out passwords for like headliner to my WordPress. I was like, oh, where does this live? And I'm like, no team, I'm going to do this all on my own. And then Jenna very nicely came in uh, at the end uh, two, three days ago and went, let me help you. Um, so I remember why I don't like doing this because you're, you're, I'm waiting here looking at the participants going, fuck, this is party I'm throwing. And like, no one's, no one's fucking showing up. Uh, <laughs> I remember why this was so hard. So um, Elizabeth, thank you for joining us. It's cool. So I'm running this whole show on my own today. So bear with me, right? Uh, I want to start and we always start by acknowledging traditional custodians throughout Australia, paying our respects to elders past, present and emerging. And I think the main thing from that acknowledgement that I take away is that I want to, I want to acknowledge my ancestors. I want to acknowledge your ancestors and um, they've, they've worked extremely hard to give us the platform that we have today. And I want us to respect that. So with that in mind, uh, do you have access to the workbook and do you, do you need a link? If you need a link, let me know. I'm going to find that. And copy, copy, drop box link. And I'm going to put that in the chat. Holly. Hi, Marcel. Hi. Hey, Kira. Uh, oh, I have to admit people too. So bear with me while this is all going on. Um, so here's what's happening, right? I've been involved in the voice space, as you know, for a little while. And uh, there was a time where um, it feels like uh, just the other day, but it was seven years ago when I was um, telling people that a podcast was a good idea for their business. <laughs> And, and, uh, and I remember getting thrown out of the Chamber of Commerce in Brisbane. Stephen Tate is the CEO. Um, and uh, I, I know Elizabeth knows him, but uh, he was just like, he didn't throw me out, but he was just like, he was just like, Ronsley, I, wait, business owners have lots and lots of problems. Are you telling me that a podcast is going to solve those? And I just couldn't convince him because of like, you know, I was new to the whole space and I was learning my way and I didn't know how I was saying you needed a podcast, but what they really needed was a voice for their brand. What they really needed was the, the conversions in every business happen in a conversation. What they really needed was for those conversations to be captured and be heard by potential people before they even bought from them or knew what they did that. So it took me a while to get to that point. But along the way, about two, maybe three years ago, I was when I was when I was doing my pitching, I came across. Uh, oh well, I I I I used to say things like, um, "Can you believe what's going to happen when we have social media for voice? Like, what is going to change when we have social media for voice? Because now, what's happening is when you think about the fact that we stop all our events." to click a selfie so we can put it on a social media platform because it's such a mature uh, medium now. And if you consider that and then consider the fact that taking pictures is not native to us, voice and conversations are native to us. So um, we started club casting because one of the things about Clubhouse was that we couldn't repurpose the things that were being done. There was gold and magic happening on Clubhouse and it was, it was being lost in the ether. So we started a, a service called Clubcast, which was 
basically recording people on Clubhouse and setting up their rooms and then taking that and putting that into a podcast. We can't take any more clients. The team is hiring. So I was like, let's run a mastermind and see whether all this is actually going to help, you know, and whether I can run this again. So that's why all this is put together. Okay. So Dropbox link, everyone's got that. Holy shit, Jane. Uh, welcome. Welcome. I know, I know you're joining us from the U S I know a lot, lots of others are joining from the U S. Uh, but, uh, Elizabeth's in her car with her family. That's, that's proper dedication. Uh, uh, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just share. My monitor. And here's what I'd love to do. If you can in the chat, what I would really like is for you to tell me what you want to get out of today. I don't want to just preach. I don't want to like, I don't want to, I, I don't think I know everything because it's too, it's so new a platform I'm learning. Holly and I started like doing, doing a lot of like, uh, you know, rooms on Clubhouse and every time it was different and we were learning different terminology. We were learning different ways to hold space and keep the environment. So what I'd love for you in the chat is, is if you can please let me know what is the most important thing that you'd like to get out of today's session so I don't go off on tangents, which I, by the way, I'm very good at doing. Extremely good at doing. So keep me on track uh, to use that, uh, use the chat, please. So I'm going to, I'm going to go through that. So yesterday I had a really good conversation with, uh, Lindsay Padilla, Dr. Lindsay Padilla. She, I mean, if you attended the last, we are podcast, uh, you'd know, you'd know that she is the founder of hello audio and it's like this amazing platform where so the problem with podcasts was that or is that you don't know who your listeners are right you don't know who they are at all with hello audio fixes that because you can create a feed and you can put a gateway which is an, either an email opt-in or you can put like a paid gateway and you can create and they can get their feed straight into the itunes app or like straight into their phone which is basically uh, I think Hugh as well uh, uses some, a similar service like that. But now I just want you to think about the possibilities for your business very specifically or where this kind of voice and audio can be used. All right. While we're going through this session today. Um, but to start, what we really want is content that builds trust, gets sales, and, and gives us happy business, happy clients, because oh, I've got to admit people on the go as well. This is just interesting. Um, so content that builds trust plus gets sales, plus happy business, happy clients. That's what we want. Correct. Anyone that is not on that page or, or, or maybe thinks differently. I'd love to know that because this is, these, these are my perceptions and I could be wrong. And the best thing about Clubhouse is that I get told how wrong I am in public, which is awesome. Um, so to have that, I believe there are two things that we require. We require an authentic message and brand, and we need that to go to an engaged audience. Yeah. So let me say that again. To have content that builds trust and gets sales so that we are happy and the clients are happy because it's it's not only about getting the leads it's about actually having happy clients and, ha and dealing with that whole scenario it's not it's not just a want this this idea of club casting and showing up on clubhouse not wasting time and capturing voice so that it builds an authentic content system for your business is really important that we understand where I'm coming from. And it's not necessarily a clubhouse tactic, but it's a voice and audio for your business tactic. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. So, um, authentic brand and message. If that, if we don't have an authentic brand and message, it is just manufactured. Hey, right. So, 
what happens if 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 it's not authentic it 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 is manufactured if it's not an engaged audience it's like a suspect audience that is like ah oh, i don't trust this person like i'm not even like you know it's just like so what happens is this is this is the obviously the worst the worst thing and it happens often is like you know if a suspect audience like comes across a manufactured message and brand which happens a lot because we're trying to do all these things as business owners it's just wasted content wasted effort it feels like we're just doing it for the sake of doing it because someone told us that content is a good idea and we have to put out the blog post we have to put out the, the show notes and all these things and and it just because um one of those things are missing and we're trying to get the we're trying to get we're, we're looking for a formula unfortunately so manufactured doesn't mean like we're going out and kind of going i want to manufacture i want to be like someone else what i mean by manufactured is we we want the the, the you know the ice cube tray <laughs> so that we just put the water in and it just gives us the exact size cubes and that's for creators we we know that that's not the case so what we definitely don't want to get stuck in is that part of the of the equation but we don't want to be either in this part where there's seller remorse where you're not happy right it's like when the when you have an authentic brand and message and you believe in it and you know that but you you're saying the wrong person uh or the wrong audience that's just going to just wasted it, right it's it's heavy it's just wrong client you land up with and then if it's an engaged audience and you know it's a manufactured brand it it's it fine it's fine it builds prospects but it they don't they don't land up becoming clients or they become clients and there's buyer's remorse you we've been in business for long enough everyone in here that i know you know you've you you know what i'm talking about when i when i'm saying these things so what we're after is basically to be to be in this space where we have authentic brand message and an engaged audience. Now, the issue here is that we think that to, to have an authentic brand and message, we have to have some sort of manufacturing process that happens, and that's not the case. Um, and the best thing about Clubhouse is that you get to find your live. I see Clubhouse as um, the space where the, the comic goes week in week out day in day out to see what jokes land and they have to land the joke irrespective of the audience and sometimes what happens is someone pokes their head in in the middle of the joke and they see no one in the audience and they poke their head out and the comic still has to land the joke that's what i see clubhouse as and i see your podcast as your netflix special where you know what is landing for your audience. So now you have, like, if you're willing to see that concept, you have your whole attract funnel for your business, voice through and through. And I'm gonna play you a clip that I literally got this week. Are we inside? Yeah, this week. Um, because I interviewed, I was interviewing Tina Tao for the psychology of entrepreneurship. And before we started the interview, she told me this story and, and I've got a clip. So that's why I had to go to headliner to make a clip, anyway. Long story. The point is, we're going to create that today. We're going to make that for you, right? We're going to like, you're the creator and you've got to find your reps. You've got to find what lands. We're going to make it as simple as possible. And here's the thing. It's not easy. Like it's not, it's, it's uncomfortable. It's extremely uncomfortable, unfortunately, to be a creator. But creators are the ones that get known, right? creators create their own space. So here's why voice works and why now. I started by telling you about stories and conversations. We sing and talk to babies before they're even born. And that's the power of, of stories and conversations. And you think about how, um, how history has been passed down. It has been passed down this way. And then you top that with the global trends of the fact that the last year we've had <laughs> an, an, an amazing time not knowing exactly what was happening. It's uncertain. It's still uncertain. We, 
in Australia, <laughs> Peter unfortunately went through like, I don't know, months of lockdown. But in Australia, like, it'll be like a couple of people and 2 million people will be shut down and just you just stay in your homes and it's just so crazy. Um, and it's all uncertain. We don't know what's so you, you put that trend on top of that. What has happened is I've been in the podcasting game for eight years, maybe the podcasting as a as as a form of medium has probably been around for 18 years. So it's taken us 18 years. So March 2020, it took us 18 years to get to a million podcasts on iTunes. OK. And we've doubled that from March 2020 to March 2021. We now have two million. Just put that in context. Just, I just want you to see the trends, right? I don't, I, I don't, I, I, and I want you to challenge it because um, it, we all have confirmation bias and we need to be aware of it. And every time we try to start something new, it's a bit hard. Okay. So just, just be aware of all that. So global trends. Three, I spoke about the social media maturity at the start, how images are such a mature uh, medium now. But you think about video as being a mature, more mature medium. There's like, I don't know, three or two million videos per minute uploaded to YouTube or something stupid like that. Um, and the number of blog posts published. So it's like mature mediums, right? And you think about voice is just finding its feet when voice is the most native to us. Just like that is that is a bit crazy, right? So the maturity of the market is really interesting. But audio and voice is consumable and engaging. Like there's no other form of content that you can consume while you're doing other things. Every other form, you have to stop what you're doing to consume it. And, you know, um, Tina Tower yesterday put up a... a um, uh, Instagram story because she was on a, on a clubhouse panel that I did. And she's like, I'm just doing this clubhouse from bed because it's good Friday. <laughs> and it was fine. I mean, you can't, you can't you're like, you don't know, no, we can't see anything. Right. And it's amazing. So, and, and number five, this is fascinating. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Does anyone here know of house party, the app? No. <laughs> So before Clubhouse came around, House Party, because of lockdown and stuff, House Party was this app that um, you joined with your own drink in your own square, like a Zoom thing. And you people would invite you, you, you would be in your square with video, drinking your drink with other people in your thing <laughs> like you know sometimes you'd see them sometimes you wouldn't sometimes you knew them sometimes you didn't and that was really fascinating there's a great article uh that was that was done about how someone felt super uncomfortable and for introverts like myself who loved the fact that we were in isolation for so long um that uh you know, we don't want to like randomly meet people and kind of be awkward in a situation. I definitely don't. So uh, that app didn't like have any legs, but Clubhouse obviously blew up. We know it's blowing up. It, there's no denying the fact that Clubhouse has blown up to 10 million users. I don't know and how and it's not even open to the public yet. That is that is mental. Um, but LinkedIn announced uh, this week that they're getting into the into the voice and audio game. Um, Spotify announced yesterday, actually, that they're getting into, um, into, uh, creating a rival for, for, for Clubhouse and Twitter has already been playing in that space with spaces. Um, so I just wanted to see trends really. I wanted you to see that everything right now is pointing to voice and audio. And I, I know as someone that has been convincing people about podcasts for a while, I've been saying this, but it but it seems like now's the good time to get involved. So I want you to think about this because this is really important. We, you attract people to the frequency you operate at is someone with something someone told me, but I think it's like you attract people to the frequency you create at. And because you create and you have this creators go through this vulnerability, you know, I believe mothers are the original entrepreneurs. We, they, they create, and put this value out onto the planet. And, um, and 
really it's just this creation and this act of creation that is just um extremely vulnerable but because we have all these tools available available to us today it makes it easy for us to find our frequency okay so here's you know to change your frequency the three things you do change your habits change your environment and change the people around you and i've just finished 75 hard phase one if no one knows what that is you should google it but changing habits has just been what a um, what a shift um and and also my wife has been telling me that not having a studio and working from a space in our house would be for years she's been saying ron so you don't need a studio you know and and because of covid now i uh, you know we we have we have a whole space for me and i'm loving this and i've changed my environment and as a result it's just this crazy unlock of 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 everything um and definitely the people around you now i don't mean that you're going to knock people out to put people in that's not what i mean i really want you know people talk about changing people around you that's not what i mean i mean exposure to any new person around you changes your frequency like if you see the same people day in and day out like you're just in the same thing so if any exposure to other spaces allows you to change your frequency and that's what i mean and other people especially because a lot of people operate in different and that's the thing i'm finding about in clubhouse is that the language is very different in different rooms certain you, you can hear the words that certain people are using that is like wait that's super interesting like i would not say these things or or, or i say these things too often or um it, it's just fascinating the, the language around things so I'm, I'm being exposed to a lot lots and lots of conversations and really cool stuff on clubhouse so we're going to create for you this is this is very specific. This whole thing is about you creating for you. So, so that's the why of the whole situation today. Right now, we're going to do all the what. And over the next 90 days, the way it's structured is if anyone or oh, there's a bunch of people that are bored, but if anyone wants to help go through it, there's we're going to do the how over the next 90 days. OK, so that's my plan. It makes sense, team. Yeah, cool. Thank you. So I don't know why that's blank. Maybe I had a plan and I forgot what that was. Anyway, in your workbook, there's this, this diagram that I got from a uh, key person of influence, actually. Uh, that's a program Peter and I uh, are probably graduates of uh, that I hear from key person of influence. Um, and uh, it's a really cool way to express uh, what you're trying to do. So what I did was I actually went through the whole process myself. <laughs> That's, you know, uh, so what we don't want as a business owner is to be our industry's best kept secret. That's just not, that's, that's like, I hear this often and every, obviously all the clients that come to amplify say this often, um, uh, that they feel like they, they are the industry's best kept secret. And, and what happens with that, there's this mixture of having a stagnant audience, uh, and having a bunch of painful clients and, uh, and, and icky sales conversations. And when, and they come together and they, and they, and they cause us this decision paralysis as a founder, as a, as a, as a person that is, um, the creator of the business and and the key person of influence i suppose is 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 a is a is a way to put that um is that does that make sense does that concept make sense great so um we don't want to be the industry's best kept secret what we want is to have clients coming into our business every day being the attract we want we want to be the attractor right we want to have engaged prospects we want new audience we want happy clients correct so what is happening is we, we are in this space that is here and we want to get here, but we go straight this way. And as a result, we make these mistakes. It's such a cool, such a cool diagram, right? So if, when, if you, even if when you're developing your program, if you want to do the same thing, 
do the three things and like that and kind of go, what are the mistakes that people are making? So, so here's what's happening, right? The first mistake that we're making on Clubhouse is we're not positioning ourselves correctly. This happens because we're so really close to our business and we need a sounding board. Like, uh, yeah, of course you can have a copy of the emails. Um, uh, so the first mistake is we don't position properly. The second, and I, and I made that mistake in the first few, because I was learning, I literally, we, we were all learning at the start, uh, trying to figure this all out. So the second thing is that we dabble with no plan and we just do either these, <laughs> either we spend hours with overwhelm, but the problem is that every person going to the gym with no plan will fail on the hard days. Does that make sense? Like, like if you don't have a plan, that, like there are days that it's hard. There are days that you, there are days that you show up and there's like one person in the room and you're like, oh shit. Um, and those are hard days and every business owner knows what that's like. Uh, every creator knows what that's like. Um, we all as artists, I think we just want people to interact with our art and tell us how good we are. But, um, <laughs> um, but, um, so that's the second thing. The third thing is that we spend hours on clubhouse and it's overwhelmed. And that is probably, uh, that should be number one, probably, because that's happening way too often, way too often, spending hours on clubhouse and overwhelmed. And this method is only two, like literally two, one hour a week or two hours a week at the most uh, on clubhouse. But what happens with that? You have lots of opportunity. I had yesterday someone, um, Holly, you were in that room when someone uh, came into the room saying, oh, there's all this opportunity, but I don't even know what to do with it. I don't know how to convert it into clients. And that's another thing that happens is like, oh, how do I make these people clients? Because that's another, this, as, as founder business owners, that is a thing. Like, you know, how do you balance all these spinning plates? So you, what we're trying to do is create a plan and a system so we can have technology and repetitions deal with a lot of that. And does that make sense? Cool. <laughs> this is also happening a lot. Number four, we get annoyed with Clubhouse and we write a post about it on another social media platform. <laughs> um, but I want to keep that in perspective because confirmation bias is an important psychological factor. And if you disagree with me, like I said at the start, I need to know because I, I mean, I'm seeing it from one perspective and the reason for having these, like I could have just recorded a video, right. And just not had you here, I, but I want the, I want you to say, Hey, Ronsi, I, I wonder whether you thought of that. So please do that. And then number five, thinking that this is a, that this is a fad and here is what I want to say to that it could be, but I told you about Spotify, LinkedIn, and Twitter. I told you about the podcast numbers and them literally doubling in 12 months, like 18 months to 12 months. It's uh, sorry, 18 years for to a million and then 12 months to 2 million. That's crazy. And voice is native voice being native. I just want you to look at, look at the trends and make up your own mind. So instead of going from being the industry best kept secret to here and making these mistakes, we've got to do this in a step-by-step -step method that actually makes us avoid the mistakes that people make. Does that make sense? Cool. So, I believe that the, there's five steps to do that. The first step is to position and I'll get into each one of these. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to break this down. So all the, the notes in are basically about the steps. I'm going to give you exactly what each steps are. Um, and then we, it, when we do the mastermind, we're going to do how those steps are implemented, like how to implement those steps. Does that make sense? Cool. So the first step is position. And, and that is obviously the first mistake, like positioning yourself correctly uh, is important because you've got to build on yourself first. Like what, what happens when you, when we see a new platform um, or, or, or anything that we try for the first time, but what happens is we don't have enough experience of what are the different ways that space can be held on clubhouse, for example. 
So we think that there's only one kind of room that exists on Clubhouse and that is Clubhouse. So it's like, oh, you come in, you have a bunch of people asking questions and, and that's the only way. And that's not the only way. But, and then what we try and also do, even in business and in branding and in marketing, is that we kind of go, oh, you know, John Lee Dumas started a podcast. He's getting all this money. He's producing his income reports. He's a millionaire. He's great. Awesome. Let's just do exactly that. And then, and, and we don't position ourselves on our mountain of value. And, and, and what we really need to do is kind of go start with us and our mountain of value, then go with the audience and then influence. So that is step one. And we'll go into, in, we'll go deeper into that. So that's the first step. Basically it's like creating your, your strategy. That's the idea there. The second step is, is your profile. And we'll talk about exactly how to do that profile system. Uh, but basically your clubhouse profile is like real estate that people are constantly checking out constantly. I, I, I cannot, Oh, I cannot re I, the, 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 my DMS on Instagram, I've lost its mind. And when I'm sleeping, like right, and it's because people are going onto the onto the inst onto my clubhouse, and um, and um, and interacting. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, step three is presenting. Now, there's no way out of this, unfortunately. So it's very specific that you are a creator, you are a presenter, you are on clubhouse to be. So the the difference between clubhouse and every other social media platform right now is that you have filters and you can take 15 selfies before you apply the right filter to put something up on Instagram. But on Clubhouse, if you're a subject matter expert, you open your mouth and people can tell. That's it. That's as simple as it gets. And if you open your mouth and you're full of shit, people can tell too <laughs> really quickly. Uh, and there are some crazy, actually, this might be a good time to play this video. So let me play this video. Let me see if this works. Let me know if you can hear it, okay? It was in your room, Psychology of Entrepreneurship, last Friday, and she messaged me on Instagram after saying, I'm just getting started in packaging what I know into online courses. I'd love to learn more. And so I sent her a couple of like free tools that she could use just thinking, you know, she's just met me. Like it's, I didn't pitch her. I didn't sell to her. I was just like, here's some things to check out and then come back to me if you get stuck. And then I opened the launch like the Monday after that, and she booked in an application call and booked and paid her like 11 grand within an hour. Yeah, yeah, incredible. <laughs> yeah, I do. I did know up until that point, I was like, you know what, I think this clubhouse thing is a little bit of a waste of time. But yeah, maybe the universe had to prove me wrong in a really big way. So, um, I'm so glad I got that. I literally said, Tina, stop talking. Let me hit record. And because uh, <laughs> this was not in the, even in, in the actual interview. Um, okay, so where were we? We were, we were on step three, present. Um, step four, I think step four is the money step because uh, you can, the, the idea here is to capture that and publish it across other platforms because you can nurture, you can nurture your audience, right? in different ways. And the idea is that this gold is being created on Clubhouse and is it's being lost. So how do you combat that? And that's step four. Step five is taking, taking that interest and actually signing clients. Now, Tina has that kind of response because her, her funnel and her sales and her triage and her selling uh, cycle is is like down pat. She knows exactly how to take a, a a hot lead and make them a client. And often in business, that is the missing step. Like oh, we do all these things, and then we sometimes we have this spike in attention, and we're excited, and it doesn't convert because our sales funnel is all all messy, and then we lose it momentum and it all drops out and fades out and it's like um uh elizabeth that was um that was uh tina tower and tina tower has won uh australian business business person of the year 
I mean, I think a few times she's extremely um, successful, sold uh, multiple fr franchises um, and now helps women launch their online courses uh, with Kajabi in, in particular. Um, so she's amazing. Uh, and she's speaking at the next We Are podcast, actually. Uh, she's doing a, a session. So you'll meet her, Elizabeth. Um, all right. Any questions from that part? And if any of that didn't make sense, if, if you have, can you let me know? You can unmute yourself as well if you think. Cool. Cool. So let's go to this part and I'm going to just break each of these steps down, right? So I, I've just thrown a whole bunch of steps at you. So I'm going to show you what each of those steps are. So in your workbook, there's these like um, blank sheets that you can use. They're pretty much exactly made from my notes. So, um, so step one, position. How do we position? So what we don't want to do is look at others before we look at ourselves. Uh, but what we do is like, we want to build the credibility piece, right? And uh, what we don't want to do is look at others before we look at us. We want to be more memorable and relatable. So there's a, there's, there's, there's a bunch of different tactics I've learned from, Peter will know this, from uh, Key Person of Influence, from Black Belt, which is talking more stuff as well. There's a really nice way to authority and and stack your credibility in a way that doesn't feel weird, um, but starting with that first is 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 the most important step. Like forget everything else. Like if you if you understand the why that we've been through, uh, and you got that concept, the next is just focus on you and your credibility and your authority, and and build on that first. Okay. The second part of positioning is sending the right message to the, we don't want to send the right message to the wrong people. So we want to have the right audience. And one of the things as an agency owner and as a trainer, uh, you know, looking at like coaching, we are podcasts, we are members. One of the things that, that we as business owners don't do is analyze our audience often enough. Like we don't go into their pains and, exp and, and actually understand and empathize with, with where they really are at. And here's what I'm finding with Clubhouse is uh, <laughs> what I thought they were, um, they're not because people are actually telling me now upfront on Clubhouse exactly what their problems are. And, and Holly and I, like doing when we started, we were doing the Zero to Podcast because uh, Holly's written a book called Zero to Podcast. And uh, she, she reached out. I didn't know Holly before and, and, and Holly was like, can you, would you like to do a room with me? And I was like, yeah, cool. Let's do that. And I was trying to get my reps in because I was doing 75 hard and, and I committed to doing 20 minutes a day for 30 days on club hours. That was my commitment to myself um, because I'm not on email. Like I'm literally, I have been off email for a long time. I don't like any social media platforms. I thought this was a fad. I was invited um, I was invited in November. I didn't do anything. I, maybe end of November, I joined. I didn't do anything. And then 75 Hard came along and I was like, I don't want to, um, yeah, it's zero to podcast. That's, that's what it is. Uh, I, I, I don't want to go live on video. So that scared the big Jesus out of me. So instead, I decided to go live on, on Clubhouse. That's how I built my reps. So audience is super important. Um, because we want to build our 1000 true friends. Now, 1000 true fans, if you don't know, it's a really great article. You can just Google it and you can just read, read exactly what that means. So build your 1000 true fans, a great, great concept. So to do that, uh, we use a, a tool called the audience builder. And then step three is influence. So sub step three for position one. So we don't want to focus on the big followers for influence. Now, here's what's also really interesting. And Holly, maybe I could be wrong, but this is what I noticed on Clubhouse is that um, if 
someone with like a 50,000 following opens a room by themselves, there's not many people that go into that. Ronsley, are you muted? No. Can you, can, can everyone hear me? I can hear you now, but I lost you when you, oh. right when you said my name, I lost you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's the magic, magic word for mute. Uh, cool. Oh, so I did go out. You can hear me now. Okay, cool. All right. Awesome. So, um, what happens and builds rooms are a bunch of people that join rooms. As soon as we have multiple people with average followings that come together, the room starts building even better. So if one person opens a room by themselves with a big following, not much happens, but more people that join. So that influence. So don't focus on the big followers because uh, it's not a follow for follow technique on, on, on clubhouse. Like that doesn't work. Like you don't follow for follow. I don't believe that works on clubhouse because what we want is we want, and here's the thing. Clubhouse is a team sport. Actually, business is a team sport. Actually, life is a team sport. Like it's all a team sport. And here we can pick our team and we've got to figure out what's in it for them so that we can create this really cool group and we align ourselves with the right partners. So that is the breakdown of position. Step one. Okay. Uh, step two is profile. So after we've positioned ourselves and we've done that work now, that work might seem annoying. And a lot of times we skip it and we skim over it, but I can't tell you how important step one is, especially, especially doing it with a sounding board. So doing it with other people. And, and once you do your thing, asking someone for advice, talking about it, having conversations with current clients, especially like if you already have clients, like, 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 like stress testing, um, your positioning once you do those three steps, which is starting with you, figuring out your audience, and then aligning yourself with the right influence and partners. Okay, that's step one. Step two, profile. All right. What we don't want to do, uh, we want to build your bio, but what, what we don't want to do is, is grow your audience using the follow for follow strategy because that doesn't work on Clubhouse. It's not like a, how Instagram used to be and, and you're like, oh, I'm here. Uh, Clubhouse is very, very different. Uh, we want to get found and followed and, um, and we've got to use a tool that, that is allows us, allows clubhouse to recommend our profile to new users that join the platform. And that I believe is probably the biggest leverage at this current point because clubhouse is in its beta stage, right? And once it opens up to the public and once it opens up to Android, if someone is a creator right now, just, just see when you get on Clubhouse, what happens when you get on Clubhouse, you're recommended to follow 50 people. Now, if you're creating correctly and your bio is presented correctly with the right search parameters, Clubhouse is actually telling people when they're joining up, Hey, follow this person. Like I'm going to sleep and waking up with more followers. It's crazy. It's like mental. I've never seen this kind of return on any social media platform. Um, so that's the first sub step, the bio. The second is from the profile perspective is the DM system. Now, um, I'm going to tell you what mine is because you can see it. Um, but what we don't want to do is misuse or underuse our clubhouse real estate, right? Like, and, and not only our clubhouse real estate, like think of all your digital assets or digital footprints as, um, as uh, real estate, people are finding it at some point and checking it out. And when you, when someone gets on clubhouse and they follow those 50 people and they don't connect their Instagram or Twitter or that kind of stuff, and they don't uh, tell people who they are, then someone's getting a blank follow and not checking you out. So just imagine what a waste that is as a business owner. If you want, don't want to waste time on clubhouse, right? Those are, that's just a, a ninja tactic to not waste time on clubhouse. So Runsley, can I, Runsley, yes. can I ask a quick question? Please. How important is the 50 people that you follow? Like, is that very, very important? Does that set the tone? 
Yeah, it does. I mean, it doesn't set the tone, but you can you can change it, right? It's it's. But I mean, like, I'm just saying, you really need to think about it rather than actually just follow your friends. Does that make sense? Is that is that what you're saying? Correct. So if you see whatever rooms you see on Clubhouse, if you don't like them, it means you're following the wrong people. That's this simple. That's very simple. Correct. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, sorry, I didn't know my, 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 just let me know if you, if you can't see my iPad, right. And I'm trying to explain something. I forget that you're not seeing my iPad. Uh, so just let me know. So we don't want to misuse or underuse our clubhouse real estate, but what we want to do as business owners is help the committed people. Like immediately, if someone is committed and someone wants to get this going, you want to be able to have the right flags in the right position so that they can follow the flags. They don't know your system. They don't know how to, how you can help them. They don't know any of that. So that I believe Tina's as great as that piece of audio is that only works because Tina's sales part and that part is like down pat. Does that make sense? Yeah, cool. So my, uh, I'll tell you what my, uh, my two lines are because, uh, but you can go on to clubhouse and check it out. It is now. I've at the time I was on Clubhouse for maybe six weeks, just in different places. I think my following would have been maybe about a thousand followers ish. Um, and and uh, I put the line, got a podcast and want to make money from it. DM me the word Clubhouse and I'll send you all our funnel maps. That's it. That was the line. And that line made us as a team have to go into my Instagram and create a whole system to reply to these messages. It is crazy, absolutely crazy. So we're gonna, that's the DM system is like, how do we create that for you in the right way? It's very specific, right? Oh, and then uh, just for, just for uh, testing, because I'm testing everything right now, um, maybe because this, this whole clubhouse thing only may, may, is only like two weeks old or week and a half old. So maybe a week and a half ago, I put this line, want the five tools I use on clubhouse to attract clients, DM me the word tools, and I'll send you a link to download them. So you see how that is just like very specific. This is how I'm going to help you. If you want that help go here, right? So that's the DM system. And step three is uh, <laughs> what we definitely don't want to do is do it alone. Like I invite Holly to all my rooms, almost all my rooms now, because like that initial stage would have sucked balls if Holly wasn't around. Like I was doing it on my own. It would have been horrible. It would have been rubbish. Um, so I'm extremely grateful for those reps. I'm extremely grateful for that. So I, I <laughs> Holly's like uh, at, at, at almost all my rooms. So don't do it alone. Um, use your squad to raise your influence. And literally, I get this, I get told this more often than anything else. Thank you, Ronsley, for inviting me to your rooms. Thank you, Ronsley, for inviting me to your rooms. It is absolutely crazy. And that as a creator, when you get that, you just take that and you bathe in it for as long as you can. And, uh, and then you get back to creating because those are the things that give you like, uh, Holly, you going to say something? Thank you for inviting me to your rooms. <laughs> no, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, I, I obviously, you know, for me, Clubhouse is like the fish found water. So um i i doesn't matter whether twitter spaces takes or takes over or anything i i feel like um i feel like i always go back to um philip mckernan's quote your biggest uh your your your, your greatest gift lies next to your deepest wound and i feel like that's why podcasting worked for me because i felt like growing up whenever <laughs> i said something it was questioning authority instead of asking a question so i was always misunderstood it was all this so there's this whole time for another thing uh for actually for 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 someone with a doctor before their name um to, to have that conversation with me 
Um, Hugh, how do you DM on Clubhouse? No, oh, sorry, good question, uh, Hubert. So you cannot DM on Clubhouse. I'll just assume that everyone knows this. Um, uh, that's why it's so important to connect your Twitter and your Instagram on Clubhouse because that's the only way that people um, uh, can connect with you. So they're messaging you on Instagram. Sorry, so the DM is for Instagram. Holy shit. I just assumed that. Thank you for asking the question. It's not, it's not a stupid question at all. Um, so that's profile. Okay, makes sense. So first we finished, we positioned, then we profiled. The next step is present. Now, um, I'm going to go quickly because I realized that I've been told like, this is my happy place, literally talking for 15 minutes about some cool shit that I made on an iPad. <sighs> so I'm going to go quickly through these. Um, step three, tech. Um, we, we don't want to forget that audio mat matters, right? Audio is the most important part. This is, it, it's, a, it's only when you speak. Um, Holly, your messages are going directly to me and not going to everyone. So I think you've got to click on everyone in your thing. She th was thanking Elizabeth for the book and other messages. Um, tech. So we don't want to forget that audio matters. And what we want to achieve is a clear communication and recording channel. So if you want to see what, or you want to hear what that sounds like, uh, I'm going to give you a couple of links and remind me to give you, give, give you a couple of links at the end of clubhouses that I've recorded and converted them into a podcast in, in some, in two different fashions. Okay. One for a client and one for me. So do you have an idea of how that works? So the, in the first thing is tech. The second thing is workflows because we don't want to manually do your marketing, right? I, it's just, I was like, so what was happening is uh, every time I was creating this, these, these, um, events on clubhouse, I was having to do manually promote them and I was getting annoyed. So I was like, how do I fix that? Well, not only the fact that I had to do it, but we had to do it for all these new clients that we got for Clubcast. So I was like, there must be a way to fix it. So I've created a whole bunch of automations for promotions as Zapier workflows. And literally, as soon as you create an event on Clubhouse, it puts it across my Instagram. It puts it across my Facebook group. It creates a WordPress post. It puts it in a place where someone can go and see, check out Ronsley's upcoming Clubhouse rooms automatically, right? It's all automatic. It's all, as soon as you create it, it's all done. And, 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 um, and there's a way to do it. So um, in, the, in the mastermind, I'm just going to give you the copy, all that stuff. So you can just literally just do that for yourself, right? So that's workflows. So in the present section, what I mean, what I mean by workflows is your promotions, right? So when you're presenting the, just the initial part before you go and say, I'm going live is to let people know that you're going live and you're doing promotions. Does that make sense? Yeah, cool. And, and step three, um, in here is like, we don't want to, you know, poorly moderate and lose the audience. And I, I, you know, one of the hardest things right now is to understand moderation. And I think every, every time I'm in a, in a room and I'm moderating, I'm learning something new and I don't think anyone could have taught me that. So being in a room where you can moderate in a safe space is probably something that I'm very passionate about, especially from a mastermind perspective, because I want to create these spaces where you can moderate and you can learn and you can like understand how, um, uh, we've had some some quite eventful uh, people, obviously, you know, come into clubhouse, and there's always these different ways to deal with them. But um, that's all part of moderation. I, true story, I invited uh, for a clubhouse panel uh, a gentleman that is um, uh, an acquaintance slash friend slash client. Um, who is the only person on the planet that is allowed to mine resources from the moon. His name is Naveen Jain. He's got multiple, uh, multiple businesses. That is one of them. And 
I did not hold space. Like I, like I did not set him up correctly enough. He came to the clubhouse, did not know what it was and then left in four or five minutes. And I was like, oh, fuck. And I didn't know. And in that was like Daniel Priestley. There were other big hitters in that same panel. Uh, Darren O'Lean was on that, who is the down to earth guy with Zach Afron. So there's all these people. But anyway, the point is learning to moderate in those situations or, 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 or even preparing your guests like now. I'll be very specific when a guest like that comes on and be very specific about certain things. So um, just learning to moderate because moderation is really about being a hospitable host. That's it. That's it's, the, it's, it's like, just, just, just think of it as you're inviting someone to your house. So what I've done is I don't use the word stage in my room. I use the word campfire, come around the campfire. I don't use the word microphone. I use the word talking stick. You, would you like, we'll pass you the talking stick. So I'm trying to create my own culture in my room. And that's what I'm, I'm suggesting to all you creators out there, like do your own thing and create your own culture. And that's why I feel like the, 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 this was important to do right now and see what, whether the market even wanted this kind of stuff, because because there'll be people creating dumb shit on Clubhouse. And I don't want to be the person writing posts saying, oh, Clubhouse is rubbish. So that's, I, I was like, okay, let's, let's, let's do something about it and see how, whether we can create a group of people. So, but the best thing about Clubhouse is that it thrives on, on, on groups. That's how it works. It is just social in groups. So that is step three. Step four is publishing. Uh, um, what we don't want to do is forget uh, our hosting responsibilities because not only once, so once I finish moderating a panel, I send, I send uh, my guests a message, especially if it's the first time that they've been on my, on my panel. Um, and um, I now have a pre and post checklist for what I do before clubhouse and um i have also a template which if you want that i can give that to you um and it's just basically reinforcing being the hospitable host um i just want to reinforce that because when i think about if i go to my influence part here for me i want clubhouse to be a team sport and i want to play with the right people so for that to happen me being the hospitable host is probably the most important thing. So I just keep reinforcing that. Um, where we publish then to uh, repurpose. Don't let the, the gold nugget slip because um, that's that, uh, that forces you to keep being on clubhouse and you stay there for so long. Right. And we don't want that to happen. We kind of want to be very specific. So capturing it and, and then, repurposing it to make authentic content. So I, I just want to pause on this kind of note for a second, because making authentic content is something we're all striving for. And I just want to reinforce this, that you don't have to manufacture it. You're already having them in conversations and all you need to do is recreate this space on clubhouse so you can capture them and then make your next Netflix special. Am I making sense? Yeah, cool. So, um, and the last one is, um, is the podcast. So right now what we're doing is with, with, with the Clubcast service is like, we're going, well, um, okay, what is the three most important things for a warm audience to know before they buy from our client? Right? So. For example, uh, Taki Moore is a great uh, is a great example. We do an hour a week with Taki. We record that and we put it on uh, his podcast, with, we, which we've created called the Coaches Coach, because he's the coach for coaches. Like all the coaches, I mean, it, it's just widely known <laughs> that he's the coach for coaches. So we we created the the podcast, uh, uh, the Coaches Coach, and um, we 
the idea there is someone doesn't hear about him, doesn't know who he is, finds him, searches for him, and lands up consuming this gold because Taki's biggest gift is being able to help someone that's stuck in a business problem. And we're finding that we're creating this space on Clubhouse where he's doing that. And it's like, oh, wow. And he literally is messaging me every, every time. He's like, that was insane. That was amazing. And we're not doing anything other than creating his stage in a way that he shines and his value shines because we started with him in the position part. Does that make sense? Great. So with the podcast, basically, we're kind of giving them a way to engage with you for hours, like make it your Netflix special, right? And then finally, because I want to take any questions that, that there might be, if there are any. Um, step five is profit. So not all that is great, but it doesn't turn into money, unfortunately, without this step. And um, I really want to put that in perspective because someone can hear a, a, like the, a clip from Tina or see something that works on Clubhouse and call, oh, that's working for that person. It should work for me. But there are these elements that are really important. And this is probably the biggest one, especially for business owners, is how to convert that attention into sales, right? So to do that, we don't want to spend we don't want you to spend your one on time, one on one time with the wrong people. That's just draining energy. That just doesn't work. And to combat that, we do a triage and we only talk to qualified prospects because we put them through a system where uh, we know who we're talking to right before they come to buy from us. So we're not wasting our, our, our effort. Now that's all great, but if we don't have the right offer, you know, Here's why I think like, here's why this part of launching a new product is extremely hard. Like what I'm doing right now with Clubcast because it's so new and everyone's got to learn what it's like, right? And we're kind of trying to understand how it, how does it place in our system? Is it going to be useful or is it like, is it just another fad? It keeps coming back, right? Our mind keeps kind of going, should we invest? It's not only money. It's energy, it's time. It's like a lot of different things. It's like uh, Sheldon Cooper trying to um, uh, watch a new uh, watch a new series, right? There's a lot of decisions that need to be made. Peter will get the reference. Um, so what, what tends to happen is we try to think to give our audience what we think they need and we don't want to do that. We actually want to make them an irresistible offer. And it's extremely hard. God damn, making an irres irresistible offer is extremely hard. And it's all test and measure. It literally is. It's just like literally trying to show a bunch of people um, like certain certain things, right? So when you, and it's all a little conversion process and we're optimizing all these little things. But if we don't have a process to get the stuff sorted, like a regular place to get content out, we don't have the time to go and and see where it's not working, where are the holes, what's not working in my funnel, right? Because then we're trying to get this content done and then that content done and it's just these spinning plates. So, and then finally, the sell part, we, we definitely don't want another info product. Um, so creating an information product we know does not work. We have we have enough stats to know that another information product is not going to work if we actually want to make a transformation to our people. Um, I think it's 93 or 97% of, I think it's 97%, only 3% complete an online course or an info course, by the way. That's a very wide stat. So uh, we want to create a transformational product. Okay, so those are uh, basically uh, the 16 tactics. The reason I, I created the mastermind was to do one hour a week of teaching and one hour a week of, of being on Clubhouse. And um, basically, if that's what you're interested in, go to clubcast.me. Um, but I also have a, a free template like you just can. I'm just going to give you as part of this, but I use this 
every time I start um, a room, especially a big room uh, or an important room, it's just a template that gets all my uh, thoughts in one place, right? It's just a, pl um, a clubhouse planning template. So in the notes, you can use it. It just lets me think a little bit before I start my room. Um, does anyone have questions that I can answer um, from these steps that I spoke about? Um, if there's any thing that I can help with. Yeah, Hugh, please unmute. Beginner's question, Ranjali. Oh, thanks for all of this. This is, sorry, oh, this is spectacular. Um, the, I've scheduled a, a room, my first room with a co-host for, for Monday night. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> silly question is how do I how do I make sure to go onto that room that I've scheduled? Do I just start a new room or is there a link or something? I'm just so nervous that I'm going to sit there. It's going to be go time, and I'm going to go. How the fuck do I start this room? Yeah. Let me see if I can clubhouse. Oh. If you notice that you saw that like i literally just opened clubhouse today and there was a whole bunch of followers that followed me up the top it happens all the time so uh oh so so here in yep. my events oh i haven't scheduled my next ones but okay. <laughs> if i had one here which i will test you uh whatever publish mm -hmm. okay so now mm -hmm. there's um actually i'm going to edit that and change it to right now so what's the time now 10 or 7 so maybe uh 10 30 save okay so there's yep. so right now at 10 30 uh i have a thing coming up so if you hit start a room yep. oh Interesting. Normally that should come up straight away. Holly, do you know why that's not the case? My events. Do you want me, um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add you as a co-host on one of mine and then you can open it up because I already have one scheduled. How's that? Yep, yeah, yeah, amazing, even better. Okay, see if you can open, open the one I just sent you. Just added you to. Yep. Hey, Lindsay. So. No, I so I think how this works is so for you, Hugh, how this is going to work is you go to upcoming for you. You go to my events, right? And you'll see your event. So say yep. that's your event or say this is your event and you hit start room. Okay, there we go. Easy. Start yeah. the room. Upcoming for you. My events. Oh, I gotcha. Yes. So if you notice, okay. I can't. If you notice, I can't start Holly's room because it's at it's on Wednesday at six thirty a.m. So it's mm. not even giving me the option to start. But yeah. because this is coming up at ten thirty a.m., it's I gotcha. if I hit on it. It's is giving me the start. Yeah, that that's what I was worried about because if I open the event, there's uh, no. Start. Yeah. There's got no start it. the event. So it's like, oh, okay, thank you. That relieves a lot of stress. <laughs> got it, got it. <laughs> we, we did a Facebook Live two weeks ago where I had this problem where I couldn't start. <laughs> Bronsley um, and Hugh, there's one other spot. So Bronsley, when you pull that up, like you're going to, um, could I ask you to pull it up again? Yeah. Okay, so if you, if you click on our event to open it, do you see, Hugh, how it says um, share, tweet, copy link, and add to calendar? When you build your event, mm -hmm. you can copy that link mm -hmm. and you can send it. You could put it all over the place, number one. That's a great way to, to post it. But add it to your calendar. That's another way that you can access the event at the moment of the event. You could go right into your calendar and click the link there, too, without having to go under my events. Spectacular, thank you. And and any tips on how long before do you 
you start sharing it out again. You obviously, when you schedule it, you want to share it. Let's say I yeah. scheduled it a week before. Have you found a good, like, do you tell people again a day before and an hour before, or what's your frequency to, to tell people about it? Um, sorry, Raza, do you want me to answer? Or you want to answer? No, you can, you can answer. Answer, please. So um, when I create an event, like if it's within the week, then I usually um, post it. If it's like really far out, I think it, people lose attention. Sometimes they add it to their calendar, but not always. But I always try to give heads up like the day before. I have a link tree on my bio on Instagram so that people could always find when the next one is and when the upcoming one is. And sometimes I've even like, just taken a screenshot of it and put in Instagram or LinkedIn. And I'll say T minus 15 minutes or in one hour, come one, come all, you know, just to get like a little hype going. But I don't think there's any right or wrong way. It's just what you have the time for or what hits you in that moment, I think. Okay, cool. Thanks so much, guys. You're welcome. Yeah, so um, yeah, it depends. Like I haven't scheduled obviously anything uh, for the next week because I've been literally trying to build this whole thing and kind of um, figuring out whether, um, and, and actually I thought I'd, I'd do more clubhouses, but, uh, there's a lot of different moving parts with getting an offer ready and a program ready and like, and, um, and doing it all yourself. So I have so much more empathy for someone that's doing it from the start again, because it's been so long and, um, extremely insightful though as well like i i've been i'm more self-aware as well like uh as an entrepreneur now than when i launched the previous time so i'm like picking up these really interesting cues as to when things are getting really stressful and how i can make it easy for myself all right uh yes you can get a copy of the recording of course 100 percent um i think it'll automatically go out I could be wrong, um, but if it, it isn't, it will, we'll, we'll find a way to get it out. Any questions? Yeah. Am I good to ask Ness? Is that yeah. all right? Yes, please, please. Hello. So that was really valuable. I just, to, I just want to make sure that my take on all of this is, is appropriate. No. Um, I have, you know, two uh, sources of business. One is the one-to-one -one clients, that's the individual, and the other is presenting to employers and helping them help their one-to-ones, if you get what I mean. It's like a channel. And I see Clubhouse as a, ch a channel to, to employers of SMBs. Like that to me, it's got an entrepreneur sort of angle to it merely by the people joining. Is that a valid take? It doesn't feel like some of the other channels where you're very um, end user one-to-one -one specific, like I see more Instagram or Facebook as opposed to Clubhouse feels entrepreneur to me. No, I think it feels entrepreneur to you because of the people you're following maybe. Because when I got okay. on the Clubhouse, um, like the people I followed, I was getting into um, all these African-American rooms. And I thought me, I, well, I thought me so much about, it actually thought me, made me realize that I was, I, Peter, I didn't realize I was a minority my whole life until like I got on a Clubhouse. It's crazy. <laughs> right uh <laughs> so i'd say uh it's that uh, there's there's lots of musicians someone oh my god someone sent me a message today uh let me read the message so, because it's like extremely so you know apple d app uh from black eyed peas he's one of the rappers he's he's Fili filipino american and uh he was in a room and she um got him on her podcast because she's filipino uh, American as well. Right. And, um, like I literally didn't know how to pronounce his name and I, she had, I, I had to ask her like, how do you say this name? <laughs> but, um, what I'm saying is, uh, she, her favorite rooms, she said were, uh, lullaby rooms on clubhouse and Filipino rooms. So, wow. yeah. Okay. I, I okay. would, um, do some more digging. Yeah, I think it's important to open up the rooms and see the who who come into the rooms. That's how you, we find out right now. Is like, oh, who's on Clubhouse? Um, so the title will tell, you know. Perfect. That's useful. Thank you. You're very welcome, Katharina. Yes, I would always recommend co-hosting. Like it is extremely. Um, 
like you can open up rooms on your own but i don't know what for me I, i'm not a fan of that necessarily it's like extremely nerve-wracking uh no one showing up and like not having anyone to talk to and just like sitting there waiting uh you know hoping <laughs> <laughs> if you have someone at least you can have conversations so um i'm i'm a fan of of um of co-hosting and yesterday we had a session um on daniel Priestley. so we were in a room um and uh maybe the average that maybe the, the room was maybe probably 20 people i'd say uh on average and then daniel Priestley joined the room and someone else brad mills joined the room and daniel Priestley and someone else and suddenly the room got to 60 and 70 people right on average and one of the things he said by the way was he from clubhouse made an investment in a new business called copy io.io and just uh yeah, paid. So think about the, the knock on effect of trust. He gave his money. Yeah, he then landed up having these one on one conversations. But he said even that conversation happened a month after. Hey, Holly, he said that he had that conversation with with the person that he was. Um, uh, so you heard the person pitch on Clubhouse. Said use the app, thought it was great and then landed up uh saying uh asking all these terms they sent uh, he sent them the investment portfolio and daniel sent the money and then a month later or something they had the conversation so i was like wow and that, i had that on recording so um <laughs> i'm gonna use that somewhere for sure yeah yeah katherine I, I i'm not a fan of opening it alone definitely like um um that's why the mod squad that's why I, I that's why i was feeling like this mastermind is a good idea to do it in a group so that we can do it over the 90 days build reps and i think that's what happened with holly and myself is like we build reps um monica could you give me context you can unmute yourself if you like hi ronsley hey how are you hi good i've been getting ready to go jogging so, <laughs> so i am not um but yeah, so I, yeah, I just, I've been comparing funding uh, for my, I don't know, it feels weird to even say this, but my business. Um, and it's just a really simple idea. It's um, providing business services to women of color in, and I'm in the Bay Area near San Francisco. Oh my God. Uh, I've been contracting for a long time in tech environments and I'm just ready to grow. So I started looking at crowdfunding, um, grants, <laughs> and now checking you guys out and very inspiring. But what rooms can I go yeah. check out for for trying to get funding together? <laughs> yeah, so here's what I would suggest. Um, see you, Marcel. Uh, here's what I would suggest is um, is not jumping straight away into what you see on Clubhouse from a funding perspective, like listening, because that's a very intimate, um, it's a very intimate uh, interaction, right? So um, what I would suggest is talking to like people like Lindsay Padilla, um, actually Dr. Lindsay Padilla, she's, um, mm -hmm. um, she is the, the founder of hello audio which is a tech startup um and she's um she's got some really uh, friends of mine on her board uh, like dan martell mm -hmm. and stuff like that so dan martell from a SaaS perspective if if that's what you're after um uh from a software as a service perspective then dan martell is a good person to, to check out but from um for you people of color for women for any of these very like very important to give voices to these um uh to the people that that mainstream media doesn't represent like you mm -hmm. know extremely important so for you actually doing that and opening up these rooms i feel like you have um you'll be able to create uh uh you'll be able to create a following of people like the other day someone said to me hey i'd love to connect with you i um 
Yes, yeah, you. Be, thank you for being here. Um, uh, someone said to me, "Oh, I'd love to connect with you. I'm I'm Indian too," and I'm like, "Oh, I I didn't I like on my bio it says Australian." So then I realized that at the bottom I said Australian of Indian origin. So it's fascinating, and this person has like I don't know like sixty thousand followers or something, which is which is crazy. Mm. And I and I and I feel like people are realizing that there's this voices that are not represented and and i feel like mm -hmm. we're in the same boat so i would open up rooms just to talk about the things that are not represented mm -hmm, not, mm -hmm. you don't hear about and 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 so that your audience uh women uh and and women of color don't feel alone that all the the, mm -hmm. the conversations they're having are only inside their head does that make sense yeah yeah that's what the i did a survey of like 20 women through linkedin and about two-thirds of them all said that they would listen to a podcast like this but i'm having a slow i feel like a slow start but it's a long haul and um i did a course and all that and on the 12th episode but i i'm in the process of i just need to build out more people on a team because it's really hard to get to everything as an individual. Um, and really what I was, the service is supposed to be to groom women of color to survive tech and media environments because the numbers are really low, like 3% at Facebook or of black people, 3% of Latinos. And then you look at Pandora and they've got like 40 some percent women you know, they've changed their numbers drastically. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just to kind of, it's a grooming. So I was thinking, oh, I didn't even think of a SaaS product, but it, that's possible. Um, there is another website that is helping women, but it's not women of color. And I go to that website, they've got fantastic information and resources and coaches, but it's all disorganized and clunky. Um, so I just thought, I mean, what you're saying is SaaS, for people uh, for women of color would be awesome i was thinking just doing a hybrid course and i know what the statistics are for online dropouts but i used to be a teacher so <laughs> my whole thing would be it would be about engagement networking you know what people are doing nowadays um, having a cohort show up on a facebook uh live type of engagement platform and that's what keeps me because I'm a multimodality user anyways and learner. Yeah. So just opening up those conversations and being the hub uh, of all uh -huh. those conversations is probably what I'd suggest for you, Monica. Um, did, did you say Padilla, Lindsay Padilla and yeah. Dan Martell? Correct. Okay. I'm yeah. sorry I cut you off there. I just had to get those names. No, you um, all right, okay. Tina, I'm going to run. Uh, because I didn't even realize that I did. I picked the day to launch this thing that's Easter for some reason. So, um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but I've got to go. Uh, thank you for showing up, everyone. Thank you for being here. I, um, I th I'm sure there's going to be a recording sent out. I appreciate you all, and um, have a great weekend. This is really great, Ronsley. Thanks so much. Thanks, Holly. Welcome. Bye. Bye.